uh, shoot event that I don't didn't see. Karen, are you? Ms. Gums, uh, technology-wise, recording secretary-wise, we're ready in the room whenever you are. Good morning, Blair. Good morning, Mavis. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about that. I had to step away for a minute. Good morning. Top of the morning to you, I think I should say this morning. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, first, I would like to call the Legislative Committee meeting to order Wednesday, March 17th. The time is 10.01. And we'll take the roll call. Allen? Allen. Bates? Here. Brown? Silva? Weber? Weber present. Gums? Strathman? Gums here. Strathman here. Thank you. Sorry, All right, next I would. Michelle present. Sorry, Mr. Shepard, got you. Silva is here. Thank you, Ms. Silva. Uh, next, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes from February 17th, 2021. Alan, who's? Weber will second. And a roll call on those, please. Alan? Alan? Bates? Bates, aye. Brown? Aye. Silva? Silva, yes. Weber? Weber, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Thank you. So the minutes have been approved. Uh, moving on, do we have any public comment? I don't hear any, so um, we'll go forward um, to old business. Um, under old business, I would just like to discuss um, briefly. I want to thank everybody for sending out their letters in support of the um, new COVID uh, relief fund. Um, I got phone calls from many of the members stating that they in fact received phone calls from their legislators thanking them for their support. Um, I personally got some phone calls myself. I had the opportunity to speak with uh, Congressman Kasten. We spoke for about 40 minutes. He was really grateful that he got these letters. Um, we talked about many different things, but uh, one of those issues was the connections that we're making with them and how going forward those relationships are gonna help us as a county and help them as legislators also. So I just really wanna thank everybody for doing that action item. Um, it was helpful. And hopefully we can get ahead of that game. I know that's been brought up before and we need to do a better job of, of doing that before things are already in place. Um, so thank you. That's all I have for old business. Um, moving along, this is going to be, I'm going to try and do these quickly. So we have a couple of videos and presentations. So under new business, just wanted to bring to your attention the um, House Bill 2415. That is the county cannabis revenue introduced by Anna Moeller. Um, I had sent out the email to you guys asking for you to do the witness slips, which we will get to later. Um, and essentially, this just corrects the county's ability to collect the tax that we should have been getting going forward. It's not retroactive. There was a question from one of the members. It is not retroactive, but going forward, this will fix it and we'll get the taxes that we should have been getting all along. Um, it's currently sitting in executive committee in the Illinois uh, House and they meet this morning. So they have gotten many witness slips. Thank you for doing those. Um, and then that pretty much, if there's any questions about that one, um, glad to take any questions about that, but there's really not much more to say. We just got to get it through the, uh, the committees and I don't see any opposition to it, but we still need to reach out. So no questions on that one. The second one um, that I want to talk about is HB 0315. 
this bill um, died in January. It didn't die. It was it ran out of time, <clears throat> and it was reintroduced by um, DeLuca, uh, Ms. Kipowit, and Ms. Hernandez. And in short, it amends the Illinois tax income. Basically, it provides steps to increase the local government distribute distributive fund from the year 2022 through 2025. And in short, the amount of money deposited into the LGDF fund will increase gradually over the next several fiscal years, bringing us more money, which is great, which is uh, gonna help us in all kinds of different areas. So, um, you know, if you wanna do it, please read that. I did send that in the email as well, I believe. Read that and please do a witness slip for that um, if you can to support that so we can get that through. And then that brings me to the end of my bills that I wanted to discuss. Do we have any questions about either one of those? Madam Chairman, Bates, please. Um, Go ahead, do you want us, Bates. Thank you. Do you want us to call people about HB 2415 or, or either um, of these bills? Um, yeah, you know, it, the, um, well, I've spoken to several legislators already about the uh, 2415. I don't think that there's going to be much opposition to that, but we still can make phone calls. Now we need to follow that through the committee procedure. So once it gets through executive, it'll move to another committee and then we got to pay attention to what committee and who's on that committee. So those are the folks that we're going to need to reach out to. Um, obviously Anna proposed it so we can reach out to Anna but we also need to continue to follow through that, that committee step process. So yes, that would be an excellent. excellent so who, who do you want us to call? Which well, the committee persons. So, me? well, when we get to the presentation, it'll show you, we'll, we'll go through how to see who's on the committee. So currently, oh, committee if you members? go into the, yeah, the committee members. So we want to, we want to outreach to them first so that we can get it through that committee. And then when it goes to the next committee, we want to outreach to those committee persons. And then, you know, just one step at a time, like we do our business here. Um, we just got to make sure that we do that. Okay, I'm getting it. Thanks. All right. Um, that being said, uh, Commissioner Bates, I believe you are up with your bill, your bottle bill. And I think you have a presentation. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, thanks. Um, Blair, please. Uh, so this is a bill that came to my attention uh, on a Sierra Club meeting. Uh, they were talking about a group called something like the Illinois uh, Plastic uh, Materials Handling Committee. Uh, and someone brought up this Illinois Container Fee and Deposit Act. So the reason this really perked my interest was not only does it have a deposit on bottles, but there is the possibility of becoming of King County at our recycling center, creating a redemption center where we would receive two cents per bottle. So that's the background on this. My ears perked up at that idea of not only cleaning up the landfills, but also of um, maybe getting uh, some much needed revenue to help especially our sustainability efforts be, be more sustainable. So next slide, please, Blair. Uh, so here's how it works. Uh, the state of Illinois will create a fund, uh, the Illinois Container Fee and Deposit Fund, and then the state must set up a fund to handle the deposits. The deposits have to come in and go out. So um, the fund shall distribute the money to the redemption center. So um, redemption centers can just be any store, can be a redemption center, um, but um, we're thinking that by having a redemption center at our recycling center, it might be more convenient and it might have a draw for people to say, oh, I'm going to drop off my recycling, I'll drop off my bottles. So the deposit value of five cents shall be paid to the consumer on each beverage container sold in the state. So the, so far the, the, the act, the bill, does not specify only plastic or only glass. Uh, some of the manufacturers are saying only plastic, only glass, but the bill still says um, every container uh, that, that's for a beverage. So the refund, uh, the consumer brings back the empty beverage container to receive to redeem her five cents. So this keeps the bottle out of the landfill 
and out of the recycling stream because uh, by keeping this out of a general recycling stream, it's going to be easier to actually recycle these plastics and glass containers because um, there's so many different kinds of plastic and you know the story, too much garbage gets into the waste stream, even the recycling stream. Thank you. Uh, Blair, please. Okay, so, uh, so here's the revenue possibility for Kane County, um, which I already stated, but I'll state it again. Uh, so we could have, there is a reimbursement center fee. So a dealer, so I read the whole bill and um, there was a little bit of ambiguous ambiguity. Uh, so I sent an email to the sponsor, Dealer Ramirez, but I haven't gotten an answer yet. And it's been several days, but the reimbursement center fee, uh, a dealer, dealer agent, or person, or county, of course, operating a redemption center shall be reimbursed two cents per container. This is paid by the distributor who collects the containers. Um, so uh, I picture um, a big truck, a big Pepsi Cola truck, comes and picks, delivers, you know, a truck full of Pepsi Cola to a jewel, and then they pick up all the Pepsi Cola bottles, or maybe it would be just every bottle. And then that distributor who receives the bottles pays the extra two cents fee per bottle, which could add up, right? Um, so this is paid by the distributor, as it states in the bill, who collects the containers. My question is, where's the money coming from, which will be, you know, whoever is paying for this might be the person who would be in opposition. And so if there's a distributor who is getting, who is paying the fee, that was my question. I don't know exactly where the fee comes from yet. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, some more rules. The, the labels must clearly state the deposit on the bottle. And if you buy bottles now, it'll say five cent deposit in the states of, and then it'll list like California or Hawaii. Um, but so we would have to add Illinois into that label. And um, disposal at a landfill is pro pro will be prohibited for beverage containers. So that's just like today, you can't throw a computer uh, into a landfill. Electronics are not allowed in a landfill. This would make it so that the disposal of these beverage containers in a landfill would be prohibited, which will be the incentive another incentive for the deposit and the redemption. Okay, is, is that our last one or is there one more? Okay, any deposits that are not claimed, 75% um, go to environmental and conservation related programs, yay. That would be another way to, um, to incentivize and support and fund our, um, some of our sustainability efforts here in King County. And then 25% go to the distributors. So that might be a way that the distributors would be paid back for any fee that they, are, that they have to pay. Okay, all right, good. Current state of HP 1799. I wrote this uh, a week or so ago. I don't think anything has changed. We have seven sponsors. Here they are. Dealer Ramirez was the main sponsor. Anna Moeller, our Anna Moeller. And I think that uh, I haven't contacted Barb Hernandez or Stephanie Kiffwood yet, but I'll, I can call them. I'll call them soon to get them to become sponsors. Um, it was referred to the Rules Committee. Um, we believe, I've been told, um, that there's really no chance of getting it passed this year because until COVID takes the pressure off of retailers and distributors, this is not uh, a uh, this, this bill will, will probably not gain traction, but I would like to start lobbying for it. I mean, some bills do take years to get passed. So let's get some momentum going for this bill, see if we can help the landfills and um, help maybe make sustainability more sustainable at King County. So is that the end, Blair? I did this a week ago and I, I think that's the end. That's the end. Okay, all right. So um, any questions or comments or discussion? No, it was a great presentation. And this is a perfect example of bills that we can get ahead of. Um, and, and 
follow them through the process and make sure that they get done so we're not behind the ball on these. I think I, uh, I think we should be doing um, slips, right? Witness slips. Yeah, yeah, okay. we can do lip witness slips. So please um, do for this as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so the next <clears throat> portion that of the meeting, just uh, I have your attention. I have you at the meeting. It's a it's a twenty three minute video. It it nav it's going to help navigate through the Illinois General Assembly. Uh, process and the witness slip and how to get those done. There are some backdoor ways to do things. Uh, many of you called me and asked um, for some assistance on doing these witness slips. This is something um, new for a lot of people. Um, it's a fairly easy process, but there's a lot of information in this video. And since I have your attention, I decided to torture you with a 23 minute video. So um, Blair, whenever you're ready to key it up, we can go ahead and play it. And then afterwards, if we have Navigating questions, we can... from home, sponsored by Illinois State Great. Senator Jennifer Kino Tarrant. I will be talking about two online resources today. The first of which is the Illinois General Assembly website, also known as ILGA, I-L-G-A, which can be found at www.ilga.gov. That's www.ilga.gov. You can see a screenshot right below. That is what the homepage looks like. The second resource I'll be discussing today is the Illinois General Assembly dashboard. From this point on, I'll refer to it as dashboard. It can be found at my.ilga.gov. That's M-Y.ilga. Dot G -O -V, and that's the homepage listed right below there. I'm going to give you an overview of what I'll be discussing today about the ILGA website. The first of which is legislation lookup. You can review legislation, find legislation by numbers and keywords. You can also watch live committee meetings and floor debates. Looking up legislators' voting records by specific bills. Reviewing legislators' bio, contact information, committee assignments, sponsored legislation, as well as view the leadership and the officers. Interested in what the General Assembly schedules are, you can find it on ILGA. Additionally, you can also read journals and transcripts from each legislative day. You can also create custom lists of interested legislation. And finally, you can look up a legislator based on an address. Just a short overview of what I'll be discussing that's available through the dashboard. The first of which is reviewing daily schedules. You can also review committees, uh, determine the legislation that's been assigned, the members that are in each committee, and see their schedules and hearings. You can submit a witness slip. I'll give more information about what that is later on. Reviewing a legislator's bio and contact information. This is unique to the dashboard. You can download seating charts. And then you can also view the list of legislators and leaders. Okay, the first resource I'll be discussing today is the Illinois General Assembly website, ILGA, from this point on. This is the homepage at a glance when you go to www.ilga.gov. This is what you will see. It never changes. So if you go to www.ilga.gov, this is the homepage for the Illinois General Assembly website. There are four ways to look up legislation through ILGA. The first of which is to type on the main screen in the by numbers search engine on the left hand side. Be sure to indicate whether the, you are looking for a House bill, a Senate bill, a resolution, or a joint resolution. Also, please note that each bill is four digits long. Therefore, to have a successful search, you will need to type in a four-digit number. So for an example, if you're looking for Senate Bill 19, you would need to type SB0019. The second way to look up legislation through ILGA is to type in the keyword. Say you've heard about a bill that addresses police body cameras. You aren't sure what, what the bill number is, whether it's a Senate bill or a House bill. You can review the information using the keyword search engine. 
please note that you do need to be as specific as possible to be successful. If you type in police, you will receive 1,243 results. However, if you type in a police body camera, you will get 36 results, which when you look closely at which bills are addressed, you will see actually lists only three or four bills. The third way to review legislation on the ILGA website is to click on bills and resolutions under the legislation and laws section. That will bring a page up that looks like this. Then you would need to click on the chamber that you're looking for. Each bill is organized in increments of hundreds. Then you will need to click on the bill that's listed there. It will bring up the whole list of bills. The fourth way to look up legislation on the Illinois General Assembly's website is to hover over the legislation and laws banner at the top of the screen and then click on bills and resolutions when there becomes a drop down menu. Again, that will bring this page up here, which has each chamber listed and the bills are organized in 100 increments. Then you'll need to click on the increment that you're interested in and the chamber that you're interested in, which will bring up a page like this, which is the bill status page. The bill status page is your one-stop shop for all questions about any specific bills. On this page, you will be able to read the full text of the proposed legislation as it has been introduced to the General Assembly as well as any amendments or changes will be listed there. Then you can also review the voting history. Remember, each bill is first assigned to a committee and needs to have a vote in a committee, and then it goes to the chamber floor to be voted on by the entire chamber, whether it be House or Senate. Should it pass out of the House or Senate, then it has to go to the other chamber where it is assigned to a committee. Should it pass out of committee, and then it is voted again on by the full entire chamber. So there are two committee votes, two chamber votes, and then any additional votes for concurrences or amendments. They will all be listed in that section, which is right underneath the main header. You will also be able to see the sponsors. On this example, you will see Representative Kifowit and Representative Costello were the House sponsors. The Senate sponsor is Senator Morrison. You can see her name in parentheses. That indicates that she carried the bill in its second chamber, which was the Senate. You can also see the actions. If you'll see the table listed here below, the date that the action took place, the chamber in which it took place, and then a short description of what happened. You will also be able to see the synopsis as the bill was introduced and any amendments will be listed here. So instead of going into the full text section and possibly reading hundreds of pages, you will be able to see a short summary of what the bill addresses. Then finally, on this page, you will also be able to see the statutes in the Illinois compiled statutes that the proposed bill addresses. This example addresses uh, 625 Illinois compiled statutes 53-801. Watching live committee meetings and floor debates, you can listen to committee meetings and watch live floor debates or listen to live floor debates by clicking on the audio video button under the desired chamber. For committees, you can only listen to audio there's no video that's set up attached to the ILGA website. However, floor debates, you can watch audio as well as, I'm sorry, listen to audio as well as watch video for both chambers. There is a caveat. It is only available when they are in session and or committees are scheduled. They do not DVR. They do not pause on the ILGA website. They are not archived either. On the Yoga website, you can also review a legislator's bio contact information, any sponsored legislation, committee assignments, and much, much more by clicking on members under the chamber that you're looking at, either the Senate or the House. Then you can also click on the legislator that you're looking for. I, as you see here, circle Jennifer Bertino Tarrant. 
that will bring you to our bio page. Then you can also click on bills and that will list any sponsored legislation that she has sponsored through this current General Assembly. Then you can also click on committees and that will demonstrate what committees Senator Bertino Tarrant has been assigned to. Also, you can review their schedules. When are they supposed to be in Springfield? A QIF reference is always on the main page in the upper left hand corner. You can see session schedule, not in today, next day that they're in session, or house, not in today, next day they're in session, the 28th. Okay, obviously I did this earlier in the year <laughs> and therefore they weren't in session. Click on the next sections. You can click on the schedules under either chamber that you're looking for. And then that will bring you to a page that looks like this. There will be a daily calendar listed, and then there will also be committee schedules, both today, for the week, for the month, and then any postings that have been listed. You can also review their spring schedule, which is January through May each year, and that will have them listed, um, specific any guidelines or any deadlines that they have to meet as well. On the Illinois General Assembly's website, you are able to read and review journals and transcripts for the legislative sessions. You are able to read a word-for-word -word transcript of the actions on the floor, or you can read a bare-bones journal of each legislative day's actions. To get there, you simply click on the chamber that you're interested in, journals and, journals and transcripts. You select the day that you're interested in, and then I have two examples here. They're both the same legislative day. So the first one is a journal, and that is going to be for the 32nd legislative day. My legislation. This is a unique aspect to the ILGA website. This is an opportunity for you to create a custom list of any interested legislation that you have and keep it all in one place for easy viewing in the future. You do have to create a login, but don't worry, they do not send you anything. So you need an email address and a password to create it. It just is a way for them to link the information to an account, okay? So you'd click on my legislation under the reports and increase section on the main page, and that would bring you here. Then you would click here if you're not registered or you would simply log in. And then this is your home page every time that you log in. My legislation also has a component where you can build a query. By clicking on the left hand side where it says build query, you can create a customized list. The first step would be to select the General Assembly that you are interested in. We are currently in the 99th. They do have the years listed next to them for reference. I believe there are seven different General Assemblies available at this time through ILGA My Legislation. They do have increments. Remember, keep in mind, Illinois General Assembly is in increments of two years at a time. The next step would be to select your session. The session types are regular veto and special session. Regular session is from January to May, typically. Special session is when the governor calls the legislative body back to address a specific topic or issue or piece of legislation. We had this example back in 2013 when they talked or when they addressed the pension crisis. Then there's also a veto session, which is when the General Assembly is called back to address any bills that the governor has vetoed. The next thing that you wanna fill in would be the sponsor specifics. You can do several options for this. You can either select all, and that would include every legislator in the General Assembly. You can select a legislator specific, for example, select Jennifer Bertino Tarrant to see which pieces, pieces of legislation the Senator has proposed. Or you can select body specific or party specific legislation. You know what, I'm gonna skip this one. My legislation also has a component where you can add bills and edit bills to your custom list. An example of doing that would be clicking on the left hand side where it says add bills. You need to select the General Assembly. Uh, again, I believe there are seven years included in here. My bills title, you'll have to create if it's a new one, 
you'll want to select new. Obviously, if you're editing, you'll use the a bill that you've already edited and then create a title for it. You'll want to select the session type again, regular, special, or veto. You'll want to select the legislation type. So an appointment message, was it a House bill, a Senate bill? And then you'll also want to enter the numbers which are separated by commas or the plus key. Okay, this is very important to make sure that you separate the bills by the comma or the plus keys or it will not give you adequate information. And then one specific, you can enter one specific bill number or you can enter a range of bill numbers. Let's say you are interested in, you heard something about Senate Bill 200 something. You're not sure what bill it is, put it in there and you can find out the information. And then you can, this is an example of a list that I've created here. I can go through and edit this and put comments on if I'd like. Another element of my legislation is reports. There are several reports here that are available. Uh, as you can see, House Appropriations, Bills Pending Governor's Action, Legislation in the House Rules Committee, in the Assignment Committee, um, and then you can also look day specific. Here's an example of a bill that, who was my legislator? I will not tell you how many times someone comes up to me and asks me, who is my legislator? I don't know. Well, you can find out by putting in your information here. You simply click on legislator lookup on the main page of the ILGO website. And that will bring you to the Illinois State Board of Elections website. There are two options that you can review the same information. I typically use the mobile light version because it's faster. It doesn't take as much time to download. You don't need all the extra information. Whenever I use it, I'm just looking for the names. So you simply click on the, the mode that you're looking for and then type in the address that you're looking up, whether it's your address or someone else's. Then you'll click find address and once it brings a zoomed vision or view of the address, you'll click confirm address. And then I'll tell you who you got. Now, the dashboard. The dashboard is a new element that was brought forth. It's got some unique options to it. It's a little bit more user friendly. It's a little, the interface is different. So again, the dashboard has information like you can review daily schedules, just like ILGA. You can also see committee information, the legislation that's been assigned to a specific committee, members in a committee, and their schedule. Again, the same as ILGA. This is a unique option, submitting witness slips. You can submit a witness slip through dashboard, and I'll talk a little bit more specifics on what that actually means a little bit later. You can review bios and contact information. Again, not unique to dashboard. You can do that at ILGA as well. It's just organized a little bit differently. Then here you can download seating charts. This is a unique thing to dashboard. Uh, personally, I think it's a fun little, uh, little visual aid. If you're interested, where does my legislator actually sit in the chamber? This will tell you where. And then also lists, lists the officers and leadership. Okay. So, dashboard. This is dashboard at a glance, the main page. You can get to it one of two ways. You can either go directly to the website by clicking http colon slash slash my dot ilga dot gov slash, or you can go through the ILGA website by clicking on GA dashboard on the main page. It's the only thing in red. Can't miss it. Committees. So like I said, this is organized a little bit different and you can see the main page is listed right here. To get to a specific committee to see when they are scheduled for hearings and witness slips and any legislation that may be posted to that specific committee, you click on the chamber that you're interested in over on the left hand side and then you would click on committees. And that would bring you to something that looks like this, a list of all the committees. Now on the committees, you can click on one of three things, the people, which would be members, the hearings, which would be the gavel, 
or the piece of paper, which is any legislation that may have been assigned to that specific committee. Then that'll bring you to a page like this. As you can see, there are four different tabs that you can click on members, notice of hearings and legislation, and then previous hearings. You can also review previous hearings and the legislation, the witness slips, and the voting record by clicking on that tab. Witness slips. I told you I'd speak about it, and here it is. So to get to a witness slip, a witness slip, just like it sounds, is a submission of your position regarding a specific bill. As a business owner, as a educator, as a parent, as a community member, you can submit a witness slip. You do not need to be a lobbyist, someone that works down in Springfield. You can do a witness slip, doesn't matter who you are, to let your legislator know how you feel about a bill. So to do that, you would click on committees on the left-hand menu like we just did. Then that'll bring you to a page like this. You'll click on gavel, which will bring you to the committee hearings. And then you click on the legislation that you're interested in. And then witness slip. And then you'll fill out the information. Here's an example of a witness to the bill we were just on. Uh, there's a second way to submit a witness slip. On the main page for the website for dashboard, you'll see if there's any committee hearings that are scheduled on that day. Then you would simply click on the little piece of paper over here on the right hand side. That'll bring you to a page that looks like this. You'll click on create witness slip and then you'll fill out the information. This is an example of what a witness slip looks like. Now you do not need to be present to submit this witness slip. What we always recommend people say is record of record of appearance only if you are not in attendance. Written statement filed means that you are submitting some documentation other than the, the witness slip. And then oral obviously is that you are providing personal oral testimony on, on the actual hearing. As you can see, this is the one I just brought up before. There is someone right here, Lori, Thompson, she is a constituent. She's just a regular old person. And she decided to submit a witness slip telling her legislators that she likes this bill, this House Bill 3724. Okay, so getting to know your General Assembly. You can find the bios and the information of your General Assembly on the dashboard. You simply click on the chamber you're interested in and then the members. That'll bring you to a page that looks like this. You then click on the members book and that will bring you to a biography. The people will tell you which committees they're assigned to or the pieces of paper and that will tell you what bills and pieces of legislation that they have filed and they are a sponsor of. Leadership offers officers and seating charts and former Senate members. This is some of these are in ILGA as well, but some of these are unique to dashboard. The very first is the leadership. You constantly hear in the media, leadership did this, leadership did that. This will tell you who actually is the leadership. This will give you a list. Then the officers, there's a difference between leadership and officers. Then there's also the seating chart. I think this is just a fun little element here to see where the legislators actually sit. And then this is unique to this website, former set, former chamber members. So this is available also for the House as well, but this is just the Senate page. Former Senate members. And then here is an example of a seating chart from... I believe that's the end of the, the video. Is that correct? Looks like that's the end. Yeah, I, I believe that's the end of it. Um, thank you for your indulgence in that video, but it's got a lot of information on there. Um, <clears throat> when it does come to the witness slips, if there are any further questions about that, I could certainly walk anybody through it. Again, um, she kind of glazed over it a little bit there, but it gives you an idea of all of, 
you know, as the legislative committee sits, we really need to be aware of the things that are available to us. Also for the public that's watching this, it gives them an insight on, you know, things that they might be interested in. So if they're keeping an eye on a bill, then they can reach out to us um, and they have the, the avenue to do so. Um, do you have any questions on that video at all? I, I know it was kind of quick, but. It was very interesting, Michelle. So thank, thank you for you. that. And thank I you. wouldn't mind and having, pardon me? I, I, we're gonna have a link to it. So if you wanna rewatch watch sure. it. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, Representative Kifowitz. So I was on the phone with her about a piece of legislation and told her that I was gonna be doing a presentation on the witness slips. And she told me, hey, go to my webpage. I've got something keyed up already. Don't waste your time. So I wanna thank her um, specifically for the link to this. And, um, and uh, if you guys wanna thank her too, that'd be great. But it will be available for future, um, so you can watch it at a slower rate and kind of take better notes. Um, but that's it for the video. And then I did, uh, you know, moving on from that, if, if we don't have any questions about that, I'll just move on to one other quick thing. Um, we Michelle, Michelle, this is Deborah. Can I ask a question quickly? Yes, go right ahead. Um, I, I think I filed. Um, a witness slip uh, successfully because I got a like a receipt, um, but it worked a little differently. So uh, for me, um, I had to um, uh, click on home in order to get to the uh, to a, a table that allowed me to uh, find the bill and then uh, pull up the witness slip. So it, it looks like there's, you know, a, a number of different ways to do it. It's just kind of, you have to fool around with it until you find it. Is, does that sound, does that sound Yeah, that, that is actually, that was kind of an issue with our, um, <clears throat> one of our bills, there was a link to create a, a witness slip that was bringing everybody to an error code. So there are different ways to navigate through the, to get to the witness slip. Um, I do it a little bit differently. Um, I kind of go through the back door to, it's easier for me, but every, like you said, once you play with it and figure out how to do these, they're really easy to navigate once you create your My Dashboard. Um, but again, you're, you're correct. There's a, a couple of different ways to get to that witness slip. There are maybe easier ways to do it. Um, I had to go down to uh, committee hearings and then get to the schedule to create a witness slip for one of the, the bills. Um, you had to go through home, other people, you know, just click on a name. So there are many different ways to do it, but I figured this tutorial was uh, a good start for us. And then once we play with it, then, um, then everybody will find their niche and uh, be able to create them more easily. Sure. The tutorial is great. It's just, um, um, it's, it's a learning a new, learning a new trick. <laughs> it's very cool. It, is, it cool. is. Well, thank, thank you. I, and I, you know, I was not sure if I wanted to play the whole video or not, but you know, there's a lot of information specific to this committee that we should be familiar with. And for those who already know how to do this, that's great. And thank you for indulging me and watching it again. And maybe it gave you a tip that you didn't know before. Maybe it didn't. Um, but anyways, that, that's the video and it will be available, um, for you guys to rewatch and I appreciate you guys listening to it. Um, any, any more questions about that? Madam chair, this is Cheryl. Um, go right ahead. Um, that was excellent. I have done some witness slips, but I learned some more about that and I will be contacting Stephanie uh, to let her know how wonderful it was that she shared that with you. Why, thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm sure she will too. Um, there's lots of, you know, a lot of our legislators have things that are available to us and uh, we don't know it until we call them and ask them. So creating those contacts is so essential to this committee um, and it will benefit the residents of King County. The more information we have, the better job we can do. So I know these are baby steps and might seem a little mundane, but um, we got to start somewhere. And since I'm new, I'm starting here. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Thanks. 
Thank you. Um, so under new business, um, one more thing I forgot to mention was our meet and greet. Um, we have chosen a date of April 15th, and that is going to be done by a Zoom. So speaking with um, many legislators, I've spoken with um, Tammy Duckworth and Kasten and, and quite a few other people. And, you know, the meet and greets to drive to a location has been a problem evidently in the past. So being able to do this via Zoom, um, they may be in session, but not have anything to do for a couple hours. So we can invite them to join these Zoom meetings. And I've gotten feedback from all of them that it, it's a much better option for them because it's easier. Um, so going forward, we would like to have the in-persons as well, but just creating those relationships, um, I think, uh, you know, just picking, I just kind of picked a date out of nowhere, to be honest with you. But um, if you have legislators that you would have liked to invite, we'll be putting out an email um, and getting together with Blair um, to create this, this meeting. And uh, we'll do it quarterly. And um, that's all I have to say about that, I guess. Madam Chair, this is Cheryl again. Um, go right ahead. I have created a, um, a list of all the legislators that part of their district uh, falls into Kane County. And I will, it's, I will be sharing that. Uh, I'll be sending it out um, individually so we don't violate the Open Meeting Act, but I will be getting that information out to everybody so they know who, uh, who has um, areas in Kane County. And of course, we wanna go beyond that too with all the other uh, people that represent us on a larger scale. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. And we'll be Thank talking you, later. Um, so as far as um, new business, I don't have any new business. Does anybody else have any new business? Michelle, this is Deborah again. Can I ask a question about the meet and greet? Um, um, yes. Is it is just a chance to say hello? And I, I agree um, that anything that can be done on Zoom is like magic. Um, but what are the things that we would want to talk about with those folks? I mean, you know, this, this cannabis thing came up. It, it's worth it to, for us to, to, do, uh, to do some lobbying on it. Um, uh, Mavis's bill on the bottles. Um, Jennifer Jarland has been trying to steer um, a plastic bag bill for, uh, for a while. Um, do we have... Are we going to put together like a list of the things that we want to talk to them about, or is this truly just saying hello? We're here and we we want to we want to have um, we want to have connectivity with you. Um, that's an interesting idea. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't know if there are restrictions in in place as to what we can and cannot talk about. Um, so I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that. The concept really, as I see it going forward, is to get to know them and create these relationships. So we might be having a conversation and they may bring up some legislation that's in their brain and not on paper yet um, that they would like support for. Or we may bring up something that might benefit the county to them and they might say, yes, that sounds like an excellent idea. Let, you know, write something up and give it to me. Um, so I see it going forward as more of a, you know, getting to know them, becoming friendly with them and just making that contact because we work together um, everywhere in county government, municipal government, state government, federal government. So if you have somebody or you have an idea, you want to be able to say, hey, you know, I know this person, let me give them a call and see what they think. So that's gotcha. how I see it going forward. Um, if other people have ideas, you know, um, that's great. Or if anybody knows the answer to that question about are there limitations to what can be discussed, I would, I would love to hear that. Madam Chair, Bates, please. Uh, go ahead. Um, well, I think Zoom will be perfect and um, it does create some challenges because you cannot walk around and mingle uh, at a, 
it's, it's not like a breakfast or a cocktail party where you can walk from table to table and, and uh, schmooze with people. So maybe um, maybe we do need to have some, you know, uh, an agenda. Each of the legislators could speak for a moment or two, and then maybe each of the uh, board members could speak for, uh, you know, a couple minutes. Because, uh, or we could do breakout rooms if if we decided, you know, there were um, different um, 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 bills that each person wanted to speak about. We could have a you know, bottle bill breakout room or something like that, but there's, it, it's too hard. You can't have everybody just chatting, I don't think, usually on the Zoom. Thanks. That's, that's, a, that's a point well taken and it actually makes complete sense. So I, I appreciate that. Um, hopefully, like I said, going forward, um, hopefully by next year, we'll be able to get together and hug each other at some point. Um, <laughs> But uh, at this stage of the game, you know, that's not, not so possible, but I do like those um, ideas and I think we can implement that for sure. So we'll, we'll talk later about that. Anybody else have any new business? Um, also, now we have uh, comments from our co-chair. Um, Ms. Strathman, do you have any uh, comments for us? Thank you, Ma Madam Chair. Um, I think this um, committee is uh, vibrant and alive and I'm so happy to be a part of it. And I'm happy to see us moving forward with more action. And um, I think it's a great committee to be on. The uh, spreadsheet that I'll be sending out will be um, helpful in helping everybody know who is the local uh, legislative people to contact. and. Um, I'm happy to be a part of this. That's all I have to say today. Thank you. I couldn't do it without you. <laughs> thank you. I feel so the same. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I think we're, um, we have no reason for executive session. And uh, we kept it under an hour. Look at that with a 23 minute video. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. And again, I just want to reiterate, if you have any questions about these witness slips, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I can help you navigate that, watch the video again. Um, but I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad to walk anybody through it. Um, and keep track of those bills. If something piques your interest, bring it to um, um, myself or, or Commissioner Strathman and we can get it on the agenda for our next meetings. And uh, that's all I have. So I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Eight moves. Weber will second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank, Thanks thank again, you. you guys. I appreciate it. Um, I know it was a long video, but hopefully it'll be helpful. Thank you, And Michelle. have a great St. Patrick's Day. Be safe. Everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's <laughs> Day, so. I'm, I'm one eighth.